All right, thanks for joining us. I'm here with the wonderful Allie Harvey. And I just wanted to let her introduce herself and tell us about the work that's at the Palmer Museum right now. Yeah, well, thank you, Emily. This is exciting. Um, yeah, my name is Allie Harvey and I'm an artist, which is something that I've had a hard time uh, getting my brain around. But yeah, I've been painting since I was 16. Um, I started painting because I had been drawing a lot growing up. I was uh, weirdly, like for anybody who knows me now, it's a it's a kind of odd and unexpected history for me, but I grew up really asthmatic. So I was like kind of trapped in bed. And so while I was there, I did a lot of like drawing magazines and drawing the inside of my closet. And um, I outgrew my asthma with the help of several like environmental factors, um, but at some point when I was 16, um, a mentor encouraged me like, okay, you like to draw, try painting. And I did try painting um, kind of around the same time that back East I developed a fascination with Alaska and ended up coming out here. So now my work that's on display at the Palmer Museum right now, kind of remotely from my studio downtown, um, tends to be really colorful, pretty realistic. It's all acrylic on canvas, um, but it's kind of combining my love of the reality of Alaska, which is what drew me here and kept me here, which is, you know, the amazing wild spaces that we have access to um, with my love for sharing that. So um, yeah, I hope you guys are able to follow and check out. And it's cool that the Palmer Museum is choosing to feature my work this week. We're so excited to have it. <laughs> yeah, everyone has been very excited to see your paintings. That's cool. Yeah, I guess, could you tell us a little bit more about your subjects, since a lot of us might know that some of those places that are featured in your work? Of course, I'd love to. Yeah, I, man, recently I've been doing a lot of Palmer-focused work um, and otherwise South Central. So one of the pieces I know I sent over is of um, kind of a view of Matanuska Peak up the McRoberts Trail which is, you know, at the end of Smith Road, it's, you can either go all the way up Matt Peak or you can go up Lazy or you can just go up as far as you can go up and then turn around, which is something I do a lot. Um, but it's in the fall and you're kind of looking out over the tundra and the beautiful reds and the um, green lichens out there up into a kind of classic moody Palmer sky. And that painting in particular is pretty big. It's I don't know, it's, it's, it's giant, it's a much bigger painting than the ones that I typically go towards and it was fun, it was really fun to do that. Um, another one that I, that I think is up is the Hiking Lazy, which is kind of a familiar sight to a lot of us. It's like, you're going up Lazy, which at least the non, non, the not Lazy Moose Trail, the kind of old Lazy Trail is just a classic valley trail and then it's just straight up and the painting is, um, is of that view. I like, you know, it's nice to have a pause when you're halfway up lazy. And I think we all know that kind of like you're like heaving and you stop and you look and you realize that the aspect is like this. Um, and it's beautiful and it's green. And we look forward to this time of year because you can just get out there and have that kind of technicolor green when we see not green for so many <laughs> months in the winter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I can totally relate to that. <laughs> the the <laughs> for breath slash vista. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. So when you're out, um, and I just noticed on your website that uh, you said when you're out, you're either taking pictures or do you do sketchbook drawings when you're out hiking as well to kind of bring home with you to the studio? Nope, wish I did, don't have the patience. I take a ton of pictures. I mean, like my phone is ridiculous. It's constantly out of storage. So I take a lot of snapshots. And when I first started painting, I worked from quote failed photographs. You know, I was in school. And so I found my first subjects from photos that were in the archive that didn't quite make it into our school yearbook. But you know, my teenage self at the time was like, oh, such dramatic lighting, like this could be made into a painting. And so it was kind of a way of, focusing somebody's attention on something that I saw in the quote failed photograph that was cool. Um, and I've moved away from that a little bit because I think right now my focus with 
my art is really to just kind of connect people to that sense of awe that we have when we're outside. And so I don't, I mean, maybe for instance, that picture I took of Mick Roberts wasn't on like the most beautiful bluebird day. So I still like some drama in my paintings. Um, and I'm not looking for, like, I don't, not to knock on artists who do, but my subject is not like the pastoral moose, the grizzly bear in nature, you know, it's like more kind of intimate landscape focused things that we are so lucky to see basically on the daily up here. Um, and so I do take a slew of photographs when I'm out there just so that I have plenty of material to draw from. And I, I still think I gravitate towards some of the more dramatic photos. <laughs> the stage of my teenage self. I think that's great. <laughs> uh, yeah, it sounds like, I mean, it sounds like that, that balance of like vastness and intimacy is something that has kind of, you've been working through for many years. Do you think that that's something you'll keep working on? Uh, I was just wondering about your next, the next 10 years of you as an artist. <laughs> oh my gosh. Vastness and intimacy is a really good way to put it. I had never thought about that. So thanks for that. Um, because it's true, right? Like, I just, I think there's so much out there to explore. And like, as Alaskans, we're, we understand that. Um, but there being so much of our state that even if we were to explore it every day of our lives, we wouldn't get to see it all. And we just get to have such immediate experiences of those places, which I think, yes, I'm definitely trying to bring that through in my painting. So thanks for articulating that, Emily. That's cool. Um, and yeah, I think the next 10 years, I've been really wanting to build up my art business side, um, meaning that I really want, I love painting and I love getting to connect with all sorts of people over that shared experience and shared awe. And so I've wanted to continue making that more of kind of a cornerstone of also how I get my income so that I can support myself um, in continuing to do that for more of my time. That said, I'm like, because if you had talked to me three months ago, pre-COVID, it would have been like, in the next 10 years, here's where I'm gonna go. And right now, honestly, you know, I am pretty socially distanced because I have an underlying condition, um, which prevents me from just kind of being a little bit, I, I'm just pretty risk averse with it right now. So I have not been spending that much time at all in my studio. Um, that said, you know, this time is a finite time in the scope of life. So we'll kind of see what the next year brings. I've been experimenting with watercolors because they're like a much smaller medium. See, wait for my husband. Um, <laughs> watercolors are a little bit more kind of mobile. I can work with them at my home, but uh, boy, props to anybody who is actually using watercolors because they're also very, very finicky um, and I miss my acrylics. So all that to say, I'll definitely keep on painting. Um, I've also been focusing on in addition to the watercolors and experimenting with that, seeing what I can do with writing, which is another form of expression. But I look forward to getting back to the acrylics. Wow, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's great to hear that you're experimenting. I know that that helps people keep their practice fresh. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, um, just a couple more questions for you. Um, do you have any studio tips for people that might be also working at home still over the summer and who knows how long for continuing your art practice? Yeah, I advise, and this is kind of a bummer piece of advice for folks, so like sit down, but I really, somebody gave me this advice and it was really good, which is that, you know, you can be really talented and have that talent kind of exists only in your basement and only in your mind. And I think the most important part of continuing to work on art, especially through, through a time like this, is really it's about setting aside time for it and then the discipline to fulfill that time with the steps that you've outlined for yourself. So if that is, for instance, saying, I'm going to paint for an hour a week, <laughs> like whatever feels achievable to folks, I think in this moment, and just also, of course, carving out space for mental health and just freaking out because this of the world, totally get it, but really try to have, I think, time on your calendar and sharp elbows to, to really guard that time um, from other folks, but also from yourself. I mean, I'm guilty of like the hour creeps up and I'm like, can I stay on TikTok for another hour? No, like actually focus on the thing. And then it, it acts as a springboard, right? Like if you actually do the hour, um, it's motivating because then you have 
put that hour or whatever it is that's achievable of work into the thing. And that kind of sets you up well to do another hour or just see if you want to do more. Um, so yeah, that's my kind of Debbie Downer advice is like set an achievable goal and be disciplined about achieving it. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, where can we go to find out more about your work and purchase items from you? <laughs> yeah, um, you can visit my website, which is alliharveyart.com. So that's A-L-L-I-H-A-R-V as in Victor, E-Y, art.com. Uh, you can also follow me on Facebook or Instagram at aharveart. Um, and my studio will be open at some point, but not yet. So I'll keep folks posted on what that's looking like. Excellent. Well, we will look forward to like being able to see each other in person one of these days. <laughs> Likewise. But otherwise, uh, we'll have uh, some uh, pictures of your work on Facebook for people that follow Palmer Museum as well. So yeah, we'll, hopefully we can share more that way and look forward to more to come. So. Awesome. Thank you, Emily. Thanks so much.